Hey guys, what is up? Swim here, and today we're doing best crafts. Uh, so obviously this is kind of for like new players, not necessarily brand new, but people that, you know, have limited collections and want to know what cards they should be crafting in what order. I should mention that this is obviously, you know, this is a video that in theory will potentially get outdated once like specific nerfs come through. And also the thing to understand is that if you craft a card, well, all the best cards are listed in this video, not necessarily, but m m mostly cards in this video are going to be like high power cards. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. I'm actually going to start off with champions just because it's very short and very sweet. So two champions that I would recommend crafting. Uh, and by the way, I shouldn't mention that at this point in the video, a lot of these cards come in the starter collections. Uh, and part of the reason I recommend crafting some is because they come in the starter collections. The two champions that are really good to craft early on are going to be Elise and Zed. The reason for that is fairly straightforward. Well, largely, these are very powerful champions that fit into a plethora of decks. I should probably have mentioned that at the start when I'm talking about best cards to craft. These are not necessarily going to be like the best cards in the game in terms of fitting into a specific deck. Um, but these are going to be very, very powerful cards that are very, very common in a lot of top decks and can be run in a multitude of decks in their color or region in this case. So Elise and Zed are the two best champions to craft early on. You already start with two of them each in your starting collection so it's easy to pick up a third one and you know get uh, kind of like a more built around playstyle going on and of course they're just very powerful and very diverse although at least might get nerfed soon who knows um probably not I, I think she's strong but I don't think she's crazy powerful so yeah Elise and Zed are gonna be the two champion picks let's then go by commons I'm gonna be rattling off pretty fast mostly because you know, there's a lot of different people who might want to play a lot of different decks, right? So I want to make sure I'm covering cards of, like, different regions, different colors, a lot of different play styles. So this is mostly, it's not like a top 10 list. It's going to be, I'm probably going to list, like, 50 different cards here. Um, so, <laughs> better get started. All right. Elnuk is no particular order, but I felt I should start with, you know, the big ones. Troop of Elnucks and Bill Elnucks are incredible crafts for new players. These are six common cards, and they are incredibly powerful. You see them at a really high play rate at top levels of Freljord decks. Most notably, like, I run them in my Freljord Ezreal list, and that works quite well. Um, but you can run them in literally any Freljord list right now, and they'll do fine. There's a lot of people messing around with running these and Wayfinders. This is just a super powerful card. Card, the fact that it reshuffles and the fact that these stat lines are actually just like very valuable for what you want in the meta just puts this card over the edge and you can fit it into as I said any deck and we've got some basic combat tricks in Freljord as well. That's going to be Brittle Steel and Elixir of Iron. These are two very popular commons. And you'll see these two cards in basically, again, almost every Freljord deck. Like, even the elusive, like, Splash Freljord sometimes runs Brittle Steel. So those are two very powerful, like, early cards in Freljord. Again, these are in no particular order. It was just a random coincidence that we started with Freljord cards. Legion Rear Guard and Legion Saboteur are two amazing cards for Noxus as well. Uh, you know, Noxus. Noxus tends to be best when it's playing a very aggressive strategy. So any sort of aggro strategy is going to fit in rear guard and saboteur if you're just like basically gunning the opponent down uh, and they'll do a good job fitting into like the very aggressive like Noxus Shadow Isle starter deck as well. Then we've got power card Omen Hawk. Omen Hawk is a great Freljord tool. It's going to do a good job at, you know, just kind of providing a lot of value. It's good with like the Kinko Wayfinder deck. It's good with Navoi Conspirator and pretty generally good all around. You can run it in like Ash decks as well. We get to Averroes and Sentry. It is, it's just a random coincidence that we're mostly doing Freljord cards, honestly, at this point. Uh, this is not intended. I'm just now noticing that the script is all in order of apparently Freljord cards. Avro's Century is, uh, you know, a pretty premium card. You can run it in any deck. I think it ends up just finding home in most Freljord decks just because it cycles itself. Uh, it's definitely a card that you can live without, but you'd certainly rather not. Okay, I promise this is unintentional. I actually, I swear to God, but my next card is Ice Valor. <laughs> This is a terrible video. I'm I should I should be giving other colors representation. It's in no particular order. It just so happens. Okay, Iceville Archer. 
this is a power card. Not only is this good in Ash decks, not only is this good in Ezreal decks, but the idea of Ice Veil Archer is really powerful in general. Like the ability to just slow down, like f stop one opponent, you know, on like a nice, like two mana, three, one body is pretty crazy. It's a great counter to a lot of the things you'll see in the meta, uh, like Zed, for example. Then there's Glimpse Beyond, uh, the ability, of course, to draw to and kill an ally is a very, very powerful Shadow Isle staple. One of the reasons to be in the color, although to be honest, there are many. Mystic Shot is a power card in PNZ. This is kind of like the definitive PNZ card. Like the region identity in, in Piltover and Zon is basically their just like uh, super premium removal package. And Mystic Shot as a two mana, deal two to anything. Super flexible. You can kill units. You can hit the opponent's nexus. You can do anything with this card and it's never going to be dead. Okay, then we've got Vile Feast. So Vile Feast will, of course, give uh, you the ability to deal with a lot of, like, nasty one health threats. Very, very premium card. It has, like, one of the highest win rates in the game in terms of, like, specific cards and the ability to, you know deal one damage, summon a spiderling, and drain and heal one all at the same time. It's just, you're getting a lot of things for two mana at fast speed. Great way to deal with any sort of like nasty one health units, those being Green Glide Duo is probably the most common example. Then we've got Laurent Protégé. Laurent Protégé is a pretty premium card. Uh, he is not necessarily run in as many Demacia decks as like some of these others at a top level, but he does see play at like top 100 masters, and you can see you can put him in basically any Demacia deck. He'll do very, very, very well as just kind of like a general all-purpose tool. All right, then we've got the Demacia card itself, Relentless Pursuit. Uh, this is one of the reasons to be in Demacia, a super, super powerful card. If you can use it in the right situation, it can be a little clunky sometimes, but this is, by the way, this is probably a card that's getting nerfed, so maybe don't craft this, huh? Like, <laughs> I mean, we'll see, but like this this one might, this one's probably getting nerfed, actually, if I'm being honest. Okay, so, you know, you know, if, if you're worried about the nerf, ignore that one. Um, <laughs> Shadow Assassin. Uh, oh, by the way, I should I should mention there's a good chance Troop of Elnox or Bull Elnox or whatever will get nerfed too. But you know that's you know don't <laughs> don't worry about that. Shadow Assassin. Okay, when I'm summon draw one, of course this is just a premium Ionia card. As he's playing every single Ionia deck. It's just always going to be really good value because with the elusive body, the ability to draw one, it's kind of a great elusive blocker um, because it's not very aggressive, but you can run it in any Ionia deck and it'll help you you know stabilize against these nasty elusive decks. Will of Ionia, the ability for this card to recall a unit is amazing in this meta. Now I made this list without really this meta too much in mind. I don't want to you know I don't want this list to just be about this meta or these tech cards. It's a lot more about, you know, these are just good cards to craft in general. But Will of Iona is not only good in this meta, it will probably be good in, like, most future metas as well. Card cleans up a lot of, like, value tools. It cleans up, like, standalone. The buff on that is gone. Zed, in, if, if it's, like, been buffed by, you know, Jeweled Protector or something, in, like, any buff decks, buffs are really huge right now, so the ability to reset them is great. Cleans up Hecarim. When they slap Hecarim on 6 and you will of Ionia, it usually feels great, and there's not a lot they can do about it in that deck, right? It usually slows them down enough that you will have the ability to kind of stabilize and blow them out. So this is just a really, really efficient catch-all tool in general. Then we've got Detain. Detain is, you know, another si similar tool. It's not, like, as heavily played as Will of Ionia, but that's mostly just because of the region that it's in. There's a lot you can do with this card. The ability to, like, you know, capture a unit, remove it from the board is pretty powerful, and it will see play in a lot of different decks. Then, um, we can go in ahead and get into the rares. So, now, let's do the rares. So, then we've got Thermogenic Beam. This is another just power card in PNZ. This is a card I definitely underrated at first, um, but as I played more and more of it, this just became clear that it's just like one of the strongest cards in the region. Super flexible, super great, fits into, you know, any sort of PNZ deck, except for like, you know, aggro, of course, which PNZ can do, but a lot of PNZ decks like Heimerdinger with anything, you know, Ezreal with anything. Honestly, that's that's kind of it, because you really want to play PNZ, like, champ-centric. But there's a lot of, there's like 10 different decks in those two champions. So trust me, Thermo Beam fits into all of them. It's great. Okay, this card just gets places. Green Glade Duo. I clicked on the wrong one. Green Glade Duo. Don't craft this card. <laughs> okay, Green Glade Duo. When you summon an ally, give me plus one, plus zero this round. The ability for this card to just, like, kind of, like, slap face... Um... <laughs> Is, is pretty crazy. Obviously, you guys know this is one of the stronger cards in the elusive package. It's a great early craft. You can put it in any Ionia deck and it'll perform 
very, very well. All right, we get to Trifurian Glory Seeker. Now this one, actually, you don't tend to run this in like aggro decks, but I have to mention it here because it's such a powerful card in, you know, any Noxus deck that wants to slow its roll a little bit. Um, you know, you can use it in a lot of like, kind of like the Mo Noxus Demacia decks that are running like a little bit slower. Anything with like that Trifarian Assessor package, Glory Seeker will always like hit reliable value. It has like really good combos with many cards and just kind of will never be bad value. Frenzied Skitterer is just, you know, I mean, you guys know this card. This is another card that hopefully will get some kind of nerf, but, you know, I mean, you can craft this, but, like, come on, this card is crazy. Do I, like, need I say more? Look at it. Like, it's, like, it's just good. Yeah, the ability to, you know, obviously, you know, do a big debuff when it's summoned is just crazy. For that one turn, this card, it just has a huge impact of just, like, slowing the opponents down. And it's kind of like Iceville Archer, where you're just developing a value unit that will also just ruin an opponent's attack. Okay, then we get to Chumpwump, the large Chungus himself. And, of course, this card slots into a ton of PNZ decks. As a 4-4-4, four, 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 the stat line is actually good. The thing about, like, um, Runeterra in its current state is, like, a lot of cards just exist at premium stat lines right now in like the mid uh the mid game kind of time like chump wump as a 444 is actually a very solid body like there's not really a lot of ways in the game to actually efficiently deal like four damage or deal with like large four health units so chump wump you know and like bull elnuk the elnuk package as well end up actually being a lot more valuable than they probably immediately seem so yeah, Chump Lump, Mushroom Cloud fits into a lot of decks. You can run it in Ezreal, you can run it in Heimerdinger, you can run it with like Plaza Guardians, you can run it in pretty much everything that's going to be in PNZ. Then there is Crowd Favorite. Now Crowd Favorite is a bit of a specific card. It's not going to fit into every deck, but it's great in like swarmier styles of Nox. The best example being like Nox Spider Aggro, which is of course the, you know, the kind of like the starter deck for, uh, you know, obviously you would want to modify that deck and improve it. But kind of like the starter deck for Nox SI is going to be wanting to run crowd favorite. That's going to be like a big power card that's going to help that deck out. And now we can get into a couple of the Allegiance cards. Kinko Wayfinder is going to be pretty great. The ability for it to just like summon two things. You know, you do have to build around this. But there's so many things this can hit. You can make this pull like your own Ionia cards. Like Sparring Student. Like Blade Scout. That works fine. Omen Hawk's going to be premium. Teemo is good. No joke. Like there's a lot that Wayfinder can pull out for value. And then I would say like Bannerman and Wraith Collar are pretty sweet as well. Bannerman, like you can fit this into a lot of Demacia decks. I would say like, okay, rule of thumb, uh, you should be running between 30 and 37 cards of a specific color to run their allegiance that's a good rule of thumb 30 to 37 um you don't need to run like the full 40 mono because of course you know you're gonna get some value out of putting a few cards of a different color in and of course you know you've got um bannerman demacia wraith color shadow isles and kinko wayfinder in ionia those are probably the three allegiance cards that are gonna be good to craft right off the bat the other three are a little bit less flexible and a little bit less powerful all right so then of course we have swift wing lancer swift wing lancer is a crazy powerhouse in demacia it's going to do all kinds of things the ability for this card to just be a, a, a three for one basically trading for three uh trade tra killing for two things and then generating a card in hand is unprecedented uh it's just got a very powerful stat line very powerful keyword very powerful ability and then, of course, there is the Rekindler. Rekindler is a card that you guys all know and love because they belong to this, like, Shadow Islands region. It's a pretty good region, so I've been told it does some neat things. And Rekindler is definitely a large part of that, especially when games are going a little bit slower. You can run this in a lot of Shadow Isles decks, and it will often be performing. So that's it. That's my list of, you know, cards. That, you know what? I said I wasn't going to do epics. I, I I lied. I'll actually, I'll talk about the two epics in the game that are worth crafting, okay? It's Windfair Hatchling and the Harrowing, okay? There. Although this card, there's a chance this might get nerfed, but eh, maybe it's fine. Windfair, <laughs> Windfair Hatchling and the Harrowing. That's it. The rest of these cards and uh, probably Progress Day if you're interested in that style of deck. Okay, I lied. There's three. They're, they're okay, three epics that are probably worth crafting. It, it's actually quite fascinating that most of the epics in this game are like kind of weak. But hey, 
you know? The fact that that is so makes the game a little bit more new player friendly, right? Because it means we can all build budget decks a lot better. Now, there's a lot more of these cards that are, you know, don't get me wrong. Some of these cards are competitive, right? Like you can fit these into some decks. You can run Empyrean in some decks. You can kind of almost run True Shot Barrage in some decks. You can definitely run Dawn Speakers in some decks. Shadow Seer has seen some like fringe play and Judgment can fit into some decks. Like there's some of these cards that fit into some decks. But the point of this video is basically just breaking down the best cards that are going to fit into multiple multiple decks and be high power swings when you have them. Okay, so that is it. That's the list of commons, rares, I guess epics, and champions. Uh, although, of course, I didn't really go deep into champions just because most champions aren't really super efficient to, you know, be run as, as budget tools. At the end of the day, like, at least since that are going to be the top two picks, you're not going to be in a terrible position if you craft any other champion, but I would recommend probably not spending shards on them. Uh, as much as you might be excited to play your favorite champion from League of Legends, most of them, well, okay, this card's pretty good. Most of them are going to be, like, powerful, but not necessarily going to be super important to spend so many shards on when you could be getting a lot of like rares and uh, commons for those shards, right? So the exceptions may be being a lease and said. All right, that's the video. That's like, you know, the best cards for crafting. I know it went on a little longer than I thought, but I, I was going to do a top 10 and I was like, yeah, but there's so many like cards that people might want to see from different regions and different play styles. So I figured I'll just do a quick fire. Just these are all the best cards. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for me and I'll see you guys next time.